Okay, Wilcoxon rank some test. I see the buka. Eh. Alright. Okay. Kita akan start intro ni dengan sedikit pengenalan bila kita nak lakukan Wilcox, uh, ujian non-parametric. When do we use non-parametric test? So, remember, if you remember back uh, the first lecture that we had where we teach you on how to explore the data. So when we explore data, we check for normality. Whether the data is normally distributed or not. If the data is not normally distributed like this, okay, to look for distribution pattern, normal distribution or not. If it is not normal, then you have to use non-parametric techniques. If your data is not normally distributed, you have to analyze your data using non-parametric technique. In simple words, if we got sample size quite small, like 30 or less, chances are you need to do non-parametric testing. Okay. Or you may have data a lot, but the data by its nature cannot be norm normally distributed, like length of stay in the hospital. Uh, then you have to use non-parametric technique. Okay. What test to use? How many tests we got? We got so many. We got sign test. We got Wilcoxon sign rank test. We got Wilcoxon rank sum test. We got a cross call Wallis test. We got Spearman. We got Candle. Okay. Which one that you use depends on your number of groups of observations, whether they are independent or dependent groups. The type of data, whether it is continuous data or categorical data, whether your data is normally distributed or not, and the objective of your analysis. Okay, why? Because non-parametric test does not require your data to be normally distributed. You can just use non-parametric test. All the other parametric tests, one of the requirement is the data must be normally distributed before it is valid to use parametric methods. So how they decide? Okay, they decide based on rank. Okay, they give a, uh, instead of looking at the values, the real values, they give the rank to the values. Once they give rank, so they end up the, 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 the data difference is not that big. Then you, they can do the, the analysis. So it is analysis of ranks. So for example, we have the Wilcoxon rank sum test. So here are some of the examples of the non-parametric test. We got Fisher's exact test. We got uh, Wilcoxon rank sum test. Inside SPSS, it is known as the Man Whitney U test. Then we have the Kruskal Wallis one we know what test. We have the Wilcoxon sign rank test and we have either the spearman or candle rank correlation So, which one is better, parametric or non-parametric? I prefer parametric. Why? Parametric easier to discuss. Non-parametric, you have you have only the p-value to discuss. So, the other advantage of non-parametric test, you can calculate it manually. Uh, so, even if you don't have computer, it is easy to calculate manually. Okay, there's no need for you to calculate the mean or standard deviation and chances are the result is the same. However, if the data is already uh, in a certain format, try not to change it just to fit it into non-parametric method. So, uh, try to use the data as it is. However, if 
as I mentioned, it's now non parametric test is mostly for small sample. If you want to calculate non parametric test for large samples, you will see that it is difficult. Why? Because the tables are not widely available. So the only way you can do this is by using uh, using a computer. Okay, so we're going to start with the first non-parametric test, which is Wilcoxon rank sum test. So non-parametric uh, for Wilcoxon rank sum test, it is a non-parametric comparison between two groups. So you have two groups, then uh, then you you what you do, you will rank the observation inside the two groups as though they are from a single sample. Okay, so what do you do? Just give rank, then you sum up the ranks. Very hard to understand. So the best way to show is by showing how it is done. So here you have a small sample set. Okay, we have the bus driver. We have the taxi driver. How many? Not many, only eight. What are we interested in? The blood glucose level. Is the blood glucose level the same or different between the taxi driver and the bus driver? Okay. So we have this data set. We have the glucose in milligram per deciliter. So 124, 141, 93, 139, 104, 105, 96.2, and 95. So now what happened? You have to sort it in ascending order. From the smallest to the largest. So you arrange the blood glucose level in ascending order and you give the rank from the lowest to the highest. So you see here 93, 95, 96, 104, 105, 124, 139, 141. So we already arranged it in ascending order from the smallest to the largest. So the smallest one is given the one value. The largest one is given another value. As you can see, we have the bus driver, three people. The code for work is one. We sum up their rank. So one plus six is seven, seven plus eight is fifteen. Okay. 1 plus 6 is 7, 7 plus 8 is 15, 1, 5. Okay, so that 1, 5, 15, you check with the table. So what does the table look like? Table looks like this. Okay, table A8, table A8. You got three bus driver, you got five taxi driver. So you look at the table, three and five. So three and five, they say, for the sum, for the sum of the T, it is only significant it is six or less, or 21 or larger. So it is only significant if the T is equals or less than six, or equal or larger than 21. We got the value of how much? We got the value of 15. 1, 5. So 1, 5 is between 6 and 21. So therefore, the p-value is larger than 0 0.05. Okay. So that is why very hard to get it to be significant if you use non-parametric method. For this to be significant, okay, you can see already the p-value is not significant. You see the uh, the rank is 15 and 21. So you can see that the rank is 15. So what we did was right. The p-value is uh, 
0 0.786 okay so now it <coughs> the only way for the result to be significant inside a non parametric test if all the data of the smallest group is to be at one end or the other of the spectrum okay example if these first three are all bus driver then they will become significant why one plus two plus three six so six significant or at the other end 6 plus 7 plus 8 7 plus 8 is 15 15 plus 6 is 21 21 so non parametric is not good if you want your data to be significant they will only become significant if your data is lumped at one end or the other. It will only become significant if your data is lumped at one end or the other. If they are not like this, then you will not get a significant p-value. That's why uh, very hard to get significant if you use non-parametric test. Okay. So that is the story about Wilcoxon rank sum test. Okay, that one is the easy one. Okay, this one is the tougher one. This one, I always get questioned because nobody can understand. Wilcoxon sign rank test is when you have two groups of paired observations. Okay, here is the example. We have 36 patients. We have 36 patients. We take the blood pressure at two different times. One, when you first see the patient. Two, after the patient has rested for 10 minutes, we check the BP again. Okay? So 147, 131, 166, 150, 159, 147. So you can see the trend is, if you take the patient's BP now, or you then you may measure again 10 minutes later the one 10 minutes later after the patient has rested is much lower okay so for me i got follow up for heart patient so whenever i follow up for heart patient i detect my bp to avoid my medication to be increased I will always make sure that I am resting before they take the BP. If I stand up, waiting, die. Why die? My BP goes up, my BP goes up. They increase my medication. Then my BP will drop and I become like jellyfish. Useless, cannot use already. Okay, so this is how we sort the data, erase the data. Okay, so what happened now? For Wilcoxon sign rank test, we get the sign. What sign? Positive or negative? Okay, what that's the meaning of the Wilcoxon sign rank test? We look at the sign. The sign is either positive or negative. Okay, so you see here, BPS1, BPS2. Blood pressure systolic 1, blood pressure systolic 2. Usually it is after minus before. So you can see there after minus before. 
the largest different is 16 mm hydrogerum there are three people whose BP is the same before and after sorry and there are others whose BP end up increasing after resting so what happened now we look at the difference ignore the symbol ignore the sign positive or negative you start giving rank okay let's start giving rank okay please pay attention this is where you're going to lose me siapa-siapa yang tengah uh, tengok anak tengah main dengan anak tengah masak berhenti kejap kita tengok ni you can see here there are seven who got the value of one one two three four five six seven so now you need to share the rank one two three four five six seven with these seven people since you need to share the rank so you have to sum up all the rank one plus two plus three plus four plus six plus seven how much it is 28 so 28 divided by 7 28, 28 divided by 7 you get 4 so means right now every one of those with the value of 1 get the rank of 4 ok 4 4 4 4 4 4, four. so that's how we divide up the rank if it is the same value then they have to share the rank since we already taken up 1 to 7, then we have 8, 9, 10 for number 2. 8, 9, 10. So there are 3 of them. 8, 9, 10. So 8 plus 9 plus 10, you get 27. 27 divided by 3, you end up with 9. So each one of them get the rank of 9. Okay, so on and so forth. Okay, so... For 3, you get 11 and 12. So 11 and 12, you get 11.5. 4, the value of 13, 14, 15. So they end up with the value of 14. Value of 6, 22, so on and so forth. Okay, so that is how we divide up the rank. Okay, so again, now we are going to sum up the rank by the grouping positive and negative here is the negative group here are the positive group okay so the sum for the positive is 152 the sum for negative is 409 so which one is smaller 152 is the smaller group 409 is the larger group. So we take the 152. So we take the 152, we do a table for Wilcoxon sign rank test. So the table is table A7. So you can see there, for sample size of how many? You take sample size of 33. Why 33? Because uh, we had 66 sample. Out of 66 sample, 3 got 0 values. So, therefore, we are left with only 33. So, for 33, we look here. 33, if you want to have a p-value of 0 0.05, therefore, the value should be smaller than 171. So, you can see here, ours is 152. It is smaller than 171. Therefore, it is significant. P-value is less than 0 0.00 0 p value is less than 0 0.05 but it is still larger than 0 0.02 okay and we test it using spaces we get a similar result okay so that is the story of 
with cosine sine rank test. Minum kopi tak hilang ngantuk lah. Ada. Ni kopi ay, tak tahulah kopi pak belalang kot. Ingatkan duduk atas lantai ni hilang ngantuk. Makin ngantuk je lah. Ok. Let's finish this. Ni uh, sort of second last. Ok. Kruskal Wallis test. Kruskal Wallis test ni similar to one way ANOVA. Kruskal Wallis test ni same like one way ANOVA. So, when there is three or more independent groups of observation, you use Kruskal Wallis test. Okay. The formula is like this. Ooh. Wow, very hard to answer. Very hard to answer. Why it is very hard to answer? The formula here is not given inside the formula sheet. So if I ask you in OBA, die lah. <laughs> Tapi don't worry, yours is open book exam. So you should be able to answer it. Okay, this is the formula. So, here's the example given. You got three machines. And this machine got different times. Okay, this machine got different times. You got 15 people. And each, each one of these 15 people use the machine. And you recorded the time required to fill out the machine. Based on the workers' performance, okay, you find out that in general, machine one is the slowest, machine two is next, but machine three is the fastest. Okay, so now what happened? You will have to rank the filling time from the smallest to the largest. Okay, you have to rank the filling time from the smallest to the largest. So now here is the Ranking. This is the raw data. This is the rank. So you can see there. You get the rank of all the machine. 65, 38 and 17. Okay. 65, 38 and 17. You put inside this formula. And you get the answer of 11.58. Okay, so what is the problem? Even if I give you the formula, you cannot answer. If you look carefully here, this formula don't have bracket. This formula tak ada bracket. So the only way you can answer this exam, you have to draw the bracket yourself. One bracket, two bracket, Three bracket. Okay. Then you can get the answer. Okay. Because they are all done separately. So this, you do this one first. After you have done this one, you combine this one with this one. Then you minus the one outside the value. Okay. And you get 11.58. Okay.
Okay, so 11.58, what do you do? You refer to chi-square table. <coughs> Remember, for degree of freedom 2, the cutoff point is 5.99. The degree of freedom 2, cutoff point is 5.99. Our value is larger than that. Our value is 11.58. So the p-value is very small, less than 0 0.05. So, P is less than 0 0.005. Okay. And that's how you got the answer of significance for that. When you run density yourself, you see same problem. Okay. Okay. So, that finished the third part of the Kruskal-Wallis test. Okay. Last but not least, Spearman. Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So Spearman is the non-parametric equivalent of Pearson correlation. Okay. I have never asked this exam in question. Okay, ulang balik. I have never asked this question in this exam. Uh, although formula ada. Although formula ada. Okay. So, why not? Because... If I give this exam question, you all die. Okay. So when do we use Spearman on kind of correlation? Shafiq is doing a Likert scale. So Likert scale, they use ordinal data. So for analysis by right, you're supposed to use Spearman or kind of correlation. Hi Shafiq. Okay. So Spearman and <laughs> uh, so in statistic uh, Spearman rank correlation is named after Charles Spearman but they don't use R they use Rho so it is non-parametric measure for correlation why I don't give you this for exam if I give this for exam you all die ok here's an example of Spearman uh, sorry I don't know what's happening to my computer. Your control, yeah. Okay. I'm not going to touch my mouse. If you have visual equity, visual equity is ordinal data. Okay. And you have sphericity of the eyeball. If we're trying to measure the visual equity and the sphericity of the eyeball, the more round is your eyes, the better is your visual equity. The more elongated elango elongated is your eyeball the louser is your visual equity since visual equity is ordinal data okay, 6 over 6 6 over 9 6 over 12 6 over 18 6 over 24 for me uh, if I take off my glasses I can, I can only see 6 inches from my eyes <laughs> so I don't know what's that ok so this is how we plot for the uh, the eyeball, the sphericity of the eyeball and the visual equity. 
and you can see it is not a linear relationship it is not a linear relationship okay so if it's not it is not a linear relationship you can try to use spearman row to get the value so you can see the spearman row it is none of them are significant so the visual acuity and the uh, spicy of the eyeball the r is very low 0 0.117 sorry not 0 .1. negative 0 0.108 and the p value is not significant at 0 0.117 so that is just an example okay so why don't i give it an exam because to calculate is hell so why why it is hell for the x and y you have to get the rank so first you get the let's say example here the, the one given is glucose level glucose level is x so you give the rank of x here then blood pressure level is y you give the rank of all the y here then you get the difference between x and y after you get the difference of x and y you square it then you calculate using this formula this formula is available inside your formula sheet so in theory i could have asked this for your exam but as you can see i don't ask because imagine how many calculations you have to do manually Dua jam pun tak cukup. So until now we have never given the Spearman correlation for the students exam. I may be sadistic but I am not that sadistic. Okay. Uh, statistic lain dengan sadistic. Okay. Alright. So that in short that is Spearman correlation and explanation based on experiment table the p value is only significant if the value is very very big like here it is only significant if the value is larger the, the row value is larger than 0 0.8 okay if you have a very large sample then you can use the row of 0 0.364 Okay, so with that, we finish the lecture. Okay. Maka dengan itu, tamatlah kuliah untuk non-parametric. <laughs> okay, sure. Thank you for not putting film in exam. Uh -huh. Yes, may, may you want DF zero freedom. Oh, degree of freedom. Minus one or minus two? Okay, minus one or minus two, tengok formula. Some formula got minus one, some formula got minus two. 40 test, minus two. Okay, alright. Fatima Abdullah, mana datang nombor 28? Oh, B plus C. Okay, ni ni. Uh, Fatima, ni you tanya selat yang mana ni? Mandatan 28. Okay, kita tengok Wilkerson rank sign test eh. Oh, Satu campur dua, campur tiga, campur empat, campur lima, campur enam, campur tujuh. Okay. Okay. So, satu campur dua, tiga, tiga campur, uh, so, so far lah. Yo, jangan risau, mana dua puluh lapan, saya dah kira. <laughs> okay, may you want tanya, yang bila nak minus one, bila minus two, you have to know the formula. The formula for degree of freedom differs by the test. Okay, for uh, for minima degree of freedom is uh, one. Why? It's equal to by two. 
for crucial bodies it is based number of group so you got three group so you minus one so you got so for example just now we got uh, three groups uh, for me, three machine so since you got three groups maka degree of freedom dia is dua so the formula the formula is given uh, on like that what for the Cross over this, it is C minus 1. C is number of group. Okay, so that is how we set. Alright, so and with that, we finish the uh, non parametric. So after this, okay, now double suku. Can we start at 1 o'clock? We start at 1 o'clock, we finish at 2. So you all nak makan, makan dulu. Have a nice lunch. We start at one. Uh, we start at one o'clock. We finish at two. All the computer analysis, SPSS, everything we do. I was I, I was told by the student for the the other group. Doctor, when we do SPSS, we cannot follow. Why we cannot follow? Because we are watching you on the computer screen. So if we open SPSS, we cannot see your screen. <laughs> yeah, uh, so one guy, what he did was he got two computer, one computer on Zoom or Microsoft Teams, the other computer is on uh, on SPSS. Another person got the Microsoft Teams on handphone, and the other, the notebook is running SPSS. So whatever it is, I'm not worried because I am recording all the session. So when I'm recording all the session, uh, the beauty is you all can just go through the video again afterwards, so that you can uh, so that you can just follow the steps again uh, step by step. Okay. So we stop for lunch. One o'clock we start again sharp. Then we uh, we start the SPSS. Uh, by two o'clock we're done. Then you can go and balik kampung. Okay, one o'clock eh? Okay. Participant, participant. Teng tengok boleh kick kat semua orang. Kick, kick, kick. <laughs> eh boleh kick ah. Alright, nama. Okay, 2 o'clock.